Hi there, this is Fixed It. This is a Sky Plus HD remote control and a lot of the buttons have stopped working. As we're in COVID-19 lockdown, not having a TV or video remote is an absolute nightmare. So I decided to set about fixing it. Although I'm going to be fixing this Sky Plus HD remote control, this particular fix will be suitable for most of the remote controls you have. The first thing you need to do is to take the batteries out of the remote control and usually they're in the back. Also, if you look at the back, once you've undone the battery compartment, you'll often find a single screw on its own. If so, unscrew that and then put it somewhere safe so you don't lose it. Now take a blunt knife or a spludger off eBay or a piece of blunt metal. And what you want to do is to insert it gently at one side and then move it slowly around gently prising open the plastic catches which are holding the remote control together this is quite a delicate operation because you want to make sure a you don't cut yourself but also that you don't do anything violent and aggressive to snap or break any of the plastic catches because what you want to do is to get this to unclip itself so that you can clip it back together again afterwards. It's best to start around about the middle and then work your way round to the sides and then around to one of the ends. As you can see I'm using one of grandma's old bone handle knives. These are particularly strong steel and tend to be uh, quite blunt so won't cut you if you slip or damage the plastic too badly. I find this much better than a lot of the commercially available blue or green plastic opening tools uh, for electronics and also for the spludger sticks and metal probes because they tend to be too thick and it's quite difficult to get it underneath the edges without it uh, damaging everything. Once you've got it in two halves I'd use a vacuum cleaner to suck out the dirt. As you can see lots of dog hair on ours because we've got two lovely dogs. It's important that you only clean the top side of the buttons. Do not clean the underside. If you do, you'll end up sucking off the important pads that are underneath. I find the best way to hoover it is to hold down the rubber sheet with the buttons on as you use the other hand to control the hoover to suck all the dust and dirt off. Once you've cleaned the rubber membrane with the buttons on, I'd advise you then to use the hoover to clean the rings around where the buttons are on the top part of the plastic case. Once you've got the case mainly cleaned you want to take a stiff paintbrush and brush over the area to make sure you've got all the last bits off. It's best to do this after you've hoovered um, otherwise you just end up with an awful lot of mess and muck inside the brush which makes it difficult to clean the rest of the remote. Once you've done that then get your vacuum cleaner again and just give the thing a once over. <laughs> Now you've got the top of the switch membrane clean, it's time to turn it over and to clean the inside. I'm actually going to use some 99% isopropyl alcohol to do this. This is often called rubbing alcohol and it's available from chemist pharmacies or your local drugstore. It's also the alcohol they use in injection swabs and if the pharmacy doesn't have isopropyl alcohol for sale they may well sell you a couple of the injection swabs. And basically I'm going to put some drops of the alcohol on a cotton wool swab and then I'm actually going to go to each of the individual electronic pads and clean them. The buttons work because there's two zigzag tracks on the printed circuit board with a gap between them and on the underside of the switches membrane there's a small conductive rubber pad and when you press the button it pushes the conductive rubber pad onto the zigzag tracks making a circuit which allows the button to work. The reason why the button stop working is that normal grease and sweat from your hands gets inside the device and coats the printed circuit board and this prevents the conductive rubber pad from making a circuit with the printed circuit board and even though you're pressing down on the button it's insulated by the grease and it doesn't work so cleaning it off will allow the conductive pad to make the circuit. Once you've cleaned the zigzag circuits on the printed circuit board you now need to turn over the button membrane and very very gently wipe each of the black dots which are the conductive 
pads for each of the switches on the underside of the membrane. It's important that you do this in a meticulous and careful manner because you don't want to leave any dirt and grease in place and you also don't want to damage the pads themselves. It's also really important that once you've cleaned the pads off you don't accidentally touch them with your fingertips as you'll then just deposit some new grease and dirt in place and within a short space of time you'll get intermittent problems with the switches. The best method I've found to do this cleaning is to use a couple of swabs to do a detailed clean and then take a new swab with alcohol on it and start from the top and work down again and this just makes sure that any cumulative dirt or grease gathered by the first few swabs is completely removed by the new clean swab as you've taken time to open and fix this don't rush the process otherwise you'll just have to be doing it again in the future although this video is showing the repair of the sky plus hd remote control this procedure pretty much applies to most of the remote controls that have these squidgy rubber buttons. Once you've finished cleaning the rubber membrane you need to take the printed circuit board out of the base of the case and you're going to be cleaning the base of the case but you're also going to be cleaning the grey looking infrared LED on the front of the printed circuit board. Be very careful cleaning the grey infrared LED and the red LED on the front of the circuit board. If you knock these out of place you'll find it difficult to get the printed circuit board back into the bottom of the case. Once you've cleaned the LEDs you now need to clean the two springs on the bottom of the printed circuit board. These are the battery connectors so it's a good chance for you to get them nice and clean so you don't have any battery problems in the future. The next thing you need to do is to clean the plastic lens at the front of the base of the remote control. This is infrared translucent plastic and it needs to be cleaned so that you get maximum output from the infrared LED that you've just cleaned. It's vitally important that you clean both the inside and the outside as this will dictate the distance from your device that the remote will work. The cleaner it is the more distance you'll get on the remote. The next job is to make sure you clean the two metal springs um, which are the other battery connectors um, to make sure you get a good battery connection. Not only will this ensure you don't have intermittent problems but it'll also make the batteries last longer. Before you do anything else I suggest you go and wash your hands thoroughly with soap to make sure you remove any grease and moisture and sweat from your fingers uh, because you're, you're going to be touching the parts as you put the remote control back together and you don't want to put any dirt on the contacts you've cleaned. The first thing you need to do is to pick up the PCB and orientate it so that the button contacts are facing upwards and seat it into the bottom of the handset. Make sure that the LEDs are fitting into the appropriate slot. Now take the keyboard membrane and lay it on top of the contacts and just move it gently around until you can feel that it's sat in the correct location. Then take the top and align that with the buttons on the membrane and hold it together. Before you fasten this all together it's best to test that the remote is actually working which you can do by putting in some batteries and then pressing a button to see whether or not the visible red LED lights up to tell you that it's working. A sensible thing to do would be to test each of the buttons in turn uh, but I won't do that now because it'll just take up extra time. It's time to put the remote control back together. First thing you want to do is to remove the batteries because you don't want to damage it in the process of fastening it back together. Now apply pressure to the top and bottom sides of the remote and squeeze it together until it clicks together on all sides. Now relocate the screw and screw the two halves of the remote control together. If you haven't cleaned the inside and the outside of the battery case now would be a good time to do it. I'm using a cotton earbud and some isopropyl alcohol. Now reinstall the batteries and attach the back plate and then turn the remote over and test it again to make sure it's fully working and there you have it a fully serviced and working remote control i hope you like the video please subscribe to the channel and share the video with others thanks for watching bye